Welcome everybody. My name is Joanna Mihon and on behalf of PCC I'd like to thank you for joining our own session. Uh, today we'll take a closer look at SAP Business One as a new alternative for subsidiaries in the SAP corporate environment. Our speaker today is Data Niemiec, SAP Business One Area Manager in BCC. Data has got a huge experience in complex and demanding SAP products, also in SAP rollout programs as a project manager. Before we start, two organizational remarks. Firstly, please know that our web webinar is recorded. The recording will be available on our YouTube channel if you need to come back to it later on. We'll send you the link. Secondly, please feel free to ask questions. Just use the chat window on your right and we'll collect all the questions and answer them during the webinar if possible or at the end by email. I can see that there are people among us who do not know our company yet, so let me briefly describe what do we do at BCC. BCC's offering, as you can see, covers three areas. The first one refers to SAP services. We offer a full range of services needed to implement, maintain and develop your SAP systems. Uh, secondly, BCC data centers uh, make, up, yeah, this make up the second area. We provide comprehensive IT infrastructure, maintenance, including outsourcing in our data centers and IT consulting. The third part of our offering is the BCC software factory. We create custom business software in any technology. We also offer long-term leasing of developers specializing in Java, .NET, among other areas. And uh, we are having this session today because you can potentially benefit from BCC's joint competences in both subsystems, SAP ERP or eventually s hana and SAP Business One. We uh, implement both of them, as you can see, we integrate them, of course, and we maintain them. Yeah, that would be all from me. I will now give the floor to Verta. Thank you. Uh, welcome everybody to our today's uh, webinar. Uh, as Joanna has already mentioned, the topic is uh, the ERP system in the subsidiaries. And we will go today roughly through the strategies of the potential um, choosing of the ERP system. Then we will uh, look at the mostly met integration scenarios between SAP ERP or SAP S4HANA and SAP Business One. Of course, we will discuss some of the functionalities and possibilities of SAP Business One itself. Uh, some figures which might be interesting for you to see about the usage of SAP Business One worldwide. Uh, and at the end we will pre present a example of a company which is uh, currently using a mixed environment and uh, uh, how it was implemented. So, let's begin with the strategy of uh, selection of the optimal ERP system. Uh, when we have a uh, SAP ERP or S4 HANA implemented in the headquarters and we are thinking about which system should be delivered to our subsidiary, and as a first step we look at the kind of the subsidiary that we have to deal with. And we may have different kinds in our uh, group portfolio. So we may have big production sites with very complicated delivery and production and then uh, sales processes. We may have very simple sales units, very small. We may have also warehouses. We may have service centers and small branches which maybe have one uh, production line and uh, simple processes. So all those require all those branches will have different requirements. Most apart additionally, they will also have different legal requirements related to the country they are located in. Our natural choice 
of rolling out our SAP template system uh, is absolutely justified when we think and know that the functionalities of the template system will cope, will be used by the subsidiary in 80 or 90 percent. Uh, because we know that the processes are very alike, that the subsidiary's expectations will demand using most of our functionalities implemented in the system, and that the effort needed to implement the local needs and the local expectations is um, acceptable in terms of the whole experience or, or the whole uh, project. But if we think about a small subsidiary, let's say a sales unit, this unit may use maybe 40, maybe 30, or maybe as little as 20% of the processes and functionalities implemented and available in the template system. On the other hand side, a small subsidiary will also have limited resources which can be included or assigned to the project activities. So taking that into account, uh, our group customers sometimes come to a question, is it really the best option to roll out the big SAP solution? And we did have uh, situations when the customers decided for another ERP system, smaller, most better adjusted uh, to the local needs and faster to implement. And what is the good news? is now we have the same possibility which is delivered by the same supplier. So we have now sub-business one as an alter alternative to, an, to another smaller ERP system. As said before, this choice is not obvious and not easy. So if we take into account the local requirements, what is beneficial from Sub Business One is that the local versions which are prepared by SAP are already, uh, they already contain the solutions which uh, respond to the local regal regulations. So that means that if you implement the Sub Business One, for example, in Poland, you will get the standard audit file, for example, and the correction invoice already in a standard sub-business one solution. If we then think about the time that is needed for the project, the traditional rollout uh, for, of uh, SAP ERP or S4 is usually at least six months. And with business one, we can choose the strategy of introducing a standard solution which takes several weeks and then decide to develop this solution in relation with the development and the needs of a local unit. It is also uh, faster and easier to integrate two solutions provided by the same supplier done to integrate uh, SAP ERP or S4 with another different ERP system. Also, the maintenance costs of integrated SAP solutions should be cheaper in the long term. Robert Kiyosaki, uh, the businessman and the author of the motivation books, said that if you want to go somewhere, it's better first to find someone who has already been there. So, let's have a look how the companies who introduce such scenarios are integrating both environments. First, most often met scenario is the master data management. 
it is extremely important for every corporation to have unified, well-maintained master data and especially in terms of material indexes, customers and suppliers. Of course, this set of the master data is not closed. We can also think about unifying chart of accounts or cost centers or other elements. But those two mentioned here, I think, are most critical for every company. And with the possibilities of Business One integration framework, which is an integral part of SAP Business One solution, we are able to integrate SAP Business One and SAP ERP or S4 in terms of replicating master data, which are created, accepted in the central database, and then transformed to the local subsidiaries. That means that the whole process of entering the correct values in the correct fields, of giving the acceptance of those values and providing the full set of necessary information for processes to work smoothly and according to the design, is performed by the central team in the headquarters. And by the means of the interfaces, which can be built upon the integration framework, but also based on the PI platform from SAP, can be then transferred to the local unit, uh, to the sub-business one system of the local unit. It is also possible to imagine a scenario that only a main set of data is maintained in the central team and there is a specific set of data which may be maintained by the local team. This scenario, this scenario can also be supported. What are the benefits uh, of this situation? First of all, the data are synchronized and unified among all the subsidiaries and among all the companies in the group. Second of all, the data are replicated automatically and that means lower costs of maintenance and entering the data. An additional thing which is worth mentioning is also the possibility to easily migrate the central data to the new database for, for example, a new unit which is being created in the group. The second scenario, which is also very often used, is the intercompany process. If you are using already SAP solution and you have subsidiaries, most probably you already know the principles of the intercompany processes between company codes. Exactly the same principle may be applied between SAP Business One and SAP ERP solution. That means that the sales order can be that the purchase order from the central team or from the subsidiary can be placed in the SAP Business One and then transferred as a sales order to the headquarters and then or the other way around. Yeah? And then the outgoing invoice from the delivering company can be automatically transferred as an incoming invoice to the receiving company. So that means that the documents can be replicated automatically. Again, we can use the same uh, platform for integration, so it can be either Business One integration framework or uh, SAP PI or any other integration uh, platform that is used by the, by the corporation. And again, it gives us the same advantages as we can, as we can see in the 
uh, SAP ERP solution. So that means the documents are created automatically with no need to engage any users and they are seen at the same time uh, as they have been created. So we have the real-time overview of the uh, of the sales orders and invoices in both systems. Okay, we had a look at in, at the ways that we can in, integrate both systems together. So maybe now let's uh, let's. Uh, see which functionalities are available in SAP Business One. SAP Business One covers actually all standard areas of the company um, of the company processes. So starting from the sales and customer management through uh, production orders and purchasing to finance and reporting. If we look at finance, we can find there, of course, chart of accounts, which is usually already adjusted to the local regulations. We, co we can find cost centers and, of course, the journal entry. Uh, we can also maintain fixed assets in Sub Business One uh, with all the processes of acquiring and selling and uh, calculating um, and calculating the fixed assets. Uh, of course, the integration with bank accounts, so the payment processing, bank statement processing, and many reports and analysis available in the system. One module which maybe is not strictly finance, but is also related to finance and is worth mentioning, is project management. So a company can create a project in Business One with uh, split into the appropriate phases and tasks and the validity dates of those phases and tasks. And that allows the company to monitor the progress of the project. But also, we can assign budgets to the project on every level. And then, when we post the documents, when we post the cost, we can also assign the cost to the specific project. So that means we are also able to monitor the financial progress of our projects. In terms of sales and uh, customers management, there are some functionalities of CRM. Uh, they are not very uh, complicated, so these are the basics. But you can create opportunities, you can manage your uh, marketing campaigns in SAP Business One, and then you can, of course, manage all the data related to your customer. Worth mentioning is also a service module. Uh, this module uh, already um, contains the pre-implemented processes which support uh, reclamations, which support returns from the customers, uh, performing corrections or uh, exchanging the, um, not the, the um, sent goods and resending them to the client. Uh, so this module is um, a very um, useful tool for, for example, our service centers. Another important thing, apart from, of course, many analysis and reports, is a mobile application for the people working in field. So all our uh, salesmen can access the data uh, in the in Sub Business One and enter the data in Sub Business One via their smartphones or tablets using the mobile application. Business One supports also the processes of purchasing, uh, re goods received into our warehouse, and incoming invoice posting. Of course, uh, with the credit notes, cancellations, and all the necessary functionalities. And what is also important, 
is that exactly the same way which we know from SAP ERP or SAP S4HANA, the logistics and finance are tightly connected. That means that every stock movement which is registered in the system is automatically reflected in the finance by booking on a, on a dedicated and designed account. SAP Business One is also supporting production. Uh, production planning is maybe not the most appropriate name here because most functionalities are focused on production monitoring. However, we are able to run MRP in SAP Business One and based on the demand, it will propose to create either the purchase orders or the production orders in our system. When we create the production order, we can of course change the statuses from planned to uh, realized and so on. And we are also able to confirm the production orders in the system. And based on the production, on the product tree, we can also see which uh, components need to be used to produce the finished good, which is pointed out in the specified production order. Maybe one important information about the product tree in Business One, um, for those who already use the SAP ERP and SAP uh, S4, uh, you know that in uh, SAP we have two objects. We have a bill of material and we have a routing. And in Business One, until the version 9.2, which is the current version of the system, uh, these two objects were combined in one object known as product tree. However, starting from the version 9.3, which should be released this year, the product tree will be split into bill of material and routing. So exactly the same idea as we have in SAP ERP. And this is a good news for all the production companies because that will give again more functionalities and more flexibility to use SAP Business One also in this area. It's worth mentioning that SAP Business One is available in two versions, SQL and SAP HANA. And when we speak about the version for SAP HANA, there are really powerful and very nice to use analytical possibilities included in this system. SAP has prepared a very smooth integration with an Excel sheet which allows the user to create the OLAP reports in HANA which can be then very easily combined with an Excel to prepare the graphical representation of the data gathered in the system. Another way to create uh, graphical reports is, of course, SubCrystal reports, which is also an integral part of SAP Business One. And apart from creating reports, it also deliv delivers possibility to create printouts, for example, invoices or goods receipts or any other documents that we need to issue from the system. Speaking about the possibilities of SAP Business One, we cannot skip the information that SAP Business One is available also via web. So it's known as web access and uh, it's an alternative possibility to connect to the system to currently used and mostly used remote desktop access. Another possibility, I have already mentioned the mobile access to the system and we said that it is available for the salesman but the whole SAP Business One system can be also used on the mobile devices like smartphones or ta tablets and all the data can be accessed also this way. And SAP Business One is a very flexible tool. It provides ready to use 
implemented based on the best, best SAP practices, processes, with the possibility to easily adjust them to the customer needs, because creating new fields or a user object or a dedicated report can be done directly by the user in the system. And if you need more sophisticated, more advanced solutions, which are related to your specific branch or specific activities, you have the possibility to create your own so, uh, solutions with Sub Business One Studio, studio or by programming them in the C Sharp or, my, or in .NET environment. If we look about the figures, we can see that it is currently more than 800,000 users using Sub Business One. Among those users, we have people working in more than 2,000 subsidiaries of 360 corporate companies who decided to use the mixed environment of two subsystems. We have currently 43 locations in 27 languages and that allows the business one to be sold in more than 150 countries. So, to summarize, the business one is currently used by more than 55,000 customers, companies around the world. So, we have seen the main functionalities of the system. We have seen how it can be integrated with SAP ERP. And now, let's have a look at the real example. This is the example of the Jacob Holm. That's the international company with the headquarters in Switzerland. They use SAP ERP version in their headquarters. And they have also decided to roll this SAP ERP system to their production sites, which are located in USA, Spain and France. And this, those systems are integrated with SAP Business One, which has been decided to be introduced to the sales units, which are located in Mexico, Argentina and China. The basis of the for the integration of those systems is the intercompany process. That means that the purchase orders and the invoices are exchanged between SAP Business One and SAP ERP automatically, and the means of this exchange is in Jacob Holm Business One integration framework. Those all those systems are maintained and supported by one team which uh, combines the competences of ERP and Business One and we have the privilege to be this team. So, that would be all what I wanted to present to you today. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I know that there are some questions and we will answer them in, by the email after the after the webinar, so thank you for them. If you have need any other information or any other support from our side, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much for today and I will hear you next time.